most of us whenever we start learning robotics or building our own robots we have a very big confusion of which kind of motor is best suitable or should i choose a dc motor or should i go with a dc gate motor or a bldc motor or what could be the exact factors on which i have to uh, select a motor that is best suitable to my project So here we see the list of factors that we have to generally choose or have in our checklist before selecting our motor for our project or for a robot that you're going to build. So before going to the factors directly, let us have uh, a quick look about what are the different types of motors that are generally available. Uh, frankly speaking, the classification of motors is nowhere limited because there are multiple combinations of uh, from rotational to linear, linear to rotational. There are multiple different combinations through which we can drive a robot, but yet uh, making it a short list and making it very feasible and understandable with the available products in the market These are the list of motors that are available. So the first one is an AC motor which takes AC input Which is nothing but alternating current. It's not it's not driven from a battery or a constant power source It always requires something like alternating and that's a quite different subject and uh, this one is having an application in industrials. So what do I mean by industrial here is because these motors require an AC power source. Why, why, why it is restricted to industrial is if you take a robot and your robot, your controller, your sensors all required a DC input. But if you have a motor which requires an AC input, then obviously you need to have some other external circuitry to convert that DC to AC. So for that reason, these have a higher power ratings and higher torques and higher uh, what you call uh, speed or operating factors which are quite different from a mobile robot so hence this are having a, I mean like these kind of motors have a greater application in industrial areas so the next one is a breast DC motor and the next sister okay why do you call it sister is there is a small change they are called as brushless so breast and brushless DC motors have a very quite different range of applications. So, so from a small hobbyist to a small application in your vehicle, maybe in your car or anywhere, you find a quite number of applications for breast and brushless DC motors. So to be specific, breast DC motors are very simple in operation. The control part of breast DC motor is quite simple compared to that of brushless. Why? Because brushless DC motors look like an AC motor because the power that is delivered, the power delivering factor goes like an AC three phase. Okay, the alternating voltages will be delivered to the brushless DC motor that is present here. But in a brushed DC motor, it's straight away from a battery plus or minus just two terminals. It's quite easy to understand. Uh, it's quite easy to understand. It's quite easy to implement. It's quite easy to control. But when it comes to here, you need to be a little specific in the controlling method. And of course, there are multiple methods of controlling it the one best example to understand the applications of brushless DC motors is quad rotors or multi-copters so you find a simple and quite and efficient brushless DC motors why when when you have to choose brushless DC motors especially is if you're looking for a highest efficiency and you want it to be smooth no noise either electrical or mechanical noise you go for brushless DC motors but because this subject itself will take more than an hour to cover about in-depth working and uh, I mean like operation control and advantages and everything. But still as we are restricted to choose what are the factors that are required to choose the right motor for your project or a robot. These are just a types. Okay. When it comes to geared. So there is only one difference between brushed DC motor and a geared DC motor. What is the difference? You don't have. A specific gearbox installed on the motor to cut down the speed coming out from the um, from the shaft of your motor so why do you need to cut down the speed to know the, this factor to know this kind of motor way to use we'll be looking about the first important factor before choosing your motor when it comes to the next one stepper 
and servo these two are couples why do i call them couples is the applications of them requires ease uh, whenever you need a precision of motor why do what do i mean by precision you want to move your motor just for 30 degrees you want to move your motor for more more than 1 degrees or 1.5 degrees so the more precision you need or the more control you need on the shaft you go for stepper or servo the applications also vary the same way here it's very simple and it's not worried with the position of the shaft but when it comes to stepper motor take a robotic arm it is welding at some point in the space xyz and you don't want to make it uh, make a welding joint or you don't want that motor to weld at some other point that robotic arm have don't have to uh, weld at some other point like x plus y or x plus z you, you want to minimize the errors you need to have the highest precision to control that robotic arm. So whenever you need the highest precision, you need to have to choose the highest precision motors in the market. So you need to choose the stepper or servo whenever you need precision and control over the position of shaft. When it comes to DC linear actuators, where they are actually, what exactly is the application of them? So whenever you are rotating and you want it to convert into a linear motion, something like the best example uh, uh, that I can give you is, for example, you take and you, you press a push button and it's having a linear movement. If you have a hydraulic type of uh, machine which is operated electrically, just to sit, just for an example. So because that rotational motion is converted to linear. So these are almost like seven different kinds of motors in the market for a beginner to a semi-advanced person to make a robot these are the classified different kinds of motors that are required for you to understand so why should you know these because if you know these then i can speak about what exactly are the factors that you have to look at if you know the factors then you need to pick up the best one from this from the set of this let's now look about the factors that are required the first one is torque so what exactly is torque let's not go too technical let's be simple for example you are now tightening a screw and you are applying a very good force to turn it for just one more revolution one more rotation at the tightest position of it inside some plywood or inside a wall or any position or anywhere so the force required to turn it is called as torque but when it comes to motor what exactly it is the shaft have to be rotated but how much weight you're putting on it so that it can still make a rotation is called as a torque of a motor so in simple for example you have a mobile robot it is having 10 kgs of payload on it it has to move it has to don't say that yeah i can't move it has to move so it, it means the torque of all the motors combinedly or independent or two motors two wheels or three wheels no matter how many motors you have in your mobile robot they have to be in a position to move the 10 kgs payload along with the chasis weight so it means Torque is something like when it comes to mobile robots or especially in robotics, it is the amount of weight that your robot or that your motor can capable of moving. So of course the units have a different meaning, kg centimeters. We can have a very technical explanation of torque in maybe in a, a separate video if needed. When it comes to speed, speed is something we all know, we all know about speed, but when it comes to mobile robots, be specific. Are you interested to your robot? I mean like in your robot to move at very higher speed if not compromise compromise on speed concentrate on torque but still if you are interested to make a remote controlled or uh, some kind of uh, what you call speedest car that you have to travel in a race you are you are, you are concentrating on speed then compromise on torque so these two are something like vice versa points one increases the other have to be decreased if you want to increase one you need to decrease one so these two are too friendly but too dangerous let me tell you why too dangerous to reduce the speed as we discussed here when it comes to geared motors the factor that is very important or to increase the torque we will use gears so when it comes to gears whenever you choose a motor and you want to have a gear reduction box or you you know the gear down box you know the formula of gear box you know exactly what is your desired speed you know everything then you purchase a gear box from another vendor you get a motor from another one you want to club both of them mismatch that mismatch will tear down the gears will stop your motor sometimes will burn off your complete motor windings as well so please be careful while choosing the speed reduction gear box or that particular gear down setup try to have a compatibility checks that is the second important point that you have to remember when it comes to the third point 
adding a gearbox is always always a good uh, what do you call uh, uh, looks like a good feature or good like a good step when it comes to controlling but the point here is it adds noise it will add multiple amount of noise to your gearbox maybe friction is one of the good noise that will definitely affect your gearbox i mean like your motor controlling and precision so please be careful that you always have minimum noise coming out from the gearbox whenever you try to concentrate on either torque or speed of your motor when it comes to accuracy so whenever you add some kind of noise over here because of these both obviously the motor accuracy decreases when does motor accuracy decrease because of the noise the output is not as expected obviously the accuracy it means you want to move your motor for 10 meters it will obviously stop because of friction or because of some another noise electrical noise or any noise because of the gearbox and other issues inside it it will be stopped at some 8.5 or 9.3 it might be negligible for few applications but really speaking it's a very different error and it has to be definitely be concentrated so accuracy is another point whenever you want to have the selection of motor i mean concentrating on the topic again selection of motor matters with accuracy you don't want to have a good accuracy okay that's okay then don't go for higher accuracy of i mean like efficiency of speed or torque boxes when it comes to voltage this is the a uh, lot of p uh, i mean like students or hobbyists concentrate at the bottom level but reality is whenever you open any vendor site the first thing that you see is it's a 12 volt dc motor 24 volt dc motor 48 volt dc motor why because unless and until you decide your battery pack or else you decided all these things like i want this much torque i want this much speed i want my motor should be at least 80 percent efficient or accurate and then you go set for voltage and my battery pack is 12 volts and you go for after you're turning on your specifications you go for 12 volts motor that doesn't set they are not into compact i mean like they don't sit each other you should definitely check the nominal voltage of your motor what is the nominal voltage of your motor what exactly i mean by nominal voltage the minimum voltage or uh, what is what exactly i mean by nominal voltage the voltage at which it will consume or it is required to run whenever you give some uh, uh, inputs it means the voltage that is required for it to move so it's called as nominal voltage if whenever you check the nominal voltage your battery pack should be in a position to give that voltage so nominal voltage or the voltage factor is the fourth important factor to choose the right motor